Coming up on the Elon Phoenix Weekly. We learn about an Elon athlete's summer work. Listen to the sounds of Rhodes Stadium on game day. And watch as Elon athletes give back to the community. All that and more next on the Elon Phoenix Weekly. Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Elon Phoenix Weekly. I'm Kimberly Wisniewski. And I'm Joe DiRienzo. Thanks for joining us on your ESPN2 local sports break. As a college student, you try to shape your goals and passions into some sort of career opportunity. One student, Elon, has done just that, combining his love for journalism and running and turning them into an opportunity for the future. He chose a line with, with Olympians, with Olympic medalists, and He's in like 10th or so with 400 meters to go, one lap left. Passion. It's there in Jimmy Stevenson's voice when he's telling the story of guys like Matthew Elliott, a full-time teacher and runner. And this guy, like a cannon, just fires like crazy the last 100 meters and is just rolling on these people, catching one after another, one after another. And the three people that, the last three people he needs to get, all Olympians. Um, and some of them medalists. He just misses it. He gets fourth, top three go, and um, he just missed it, I'm telling you. With Stevenson, that passion has a birth and a story to tell. Fifth grade, I saw a sign right outside the main intersection of my house, and it said Ambler Olympic Club, youth track team. And I was like, Dad, can I run? A simple sign and a question that got the passion off and running. And it all started from a little 10-year-old boy getting around the track, and his dad driving him to meets on the weekends all by himself. The other passion didn't come as early in life to Stevenson, but was developed through the first one, running. That's my dream job. I want to work for FlowTrack. I want to work for a company that fuses track and field, my passion of running, with journalism, what I'm majoring in. FlowTrack is a website centered around the running community and track and field community, providing articles, race coverage, interviews with top athletes, and videos of top athletes' workouts. For many runners, like Stevenson, it serves as their homepage. Fast forward to just before this summer. Stevenson had applied to work for FlowTrack for the summer, and then he got the call. Hey, we'd love to have you down for the summer. Uh, we're really excited, and um, yeah, yeah, his dream come true. Uh, he hit the ground running, once down at FlowTrack's headquarters in Austin, Texas. So I wrote dozens upon dozens of articles, and that ranged from breaking news stories to drug scandals that were found out ac across the world uh, to coaching changes in the NCAA. There was a ton this summer. Some of the other articles I wrote were preview articles or recap articles. The hours were all crazy, but uh, we would t I would wake up at times at 5 a.m. and do the live updates for the men's or women's marathon, feeding the audience what they want, giving them that meat. And the meat of a cross-country runner's training is done over the summer. There's a ton of runners in the office. I was able to go out with them on a certain day. Also, I was living with guys who ran for the University of Texas, and I'll tell you, that, that was an incredibly rich blessing being able to live with those guys and run with those guys. A lot of steps were made this summer for Stevenson, steps in achieving a goal. I remember 2004 in Athens. I remember this one guy in particular, Otto Bolden. He is the Olympic announcer, analyst, broadcaster for the sprinting of uh, track and field. So I was like, man, I want to be the Otto Bolden for distance running. One day I want to be the Otto Bolden and go to the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Now that might be too soon, but some Olympics down the road and be the Otto Bolden uh, for distance running. A dream that started with fifth grade Jimmy Stevenson and that Amber Olympic Club sign. You know, you want to talk about a dream job. You found a, a kid who loves a sport. In my case, it's track and field, it's cross country. It's anything to do with running. And then he's pursuing his major, mine's broadcast journalism. Put those together, fuse them down the same path, and, and that's what I'm doing. So it has been a dream come true. The dream, combining his two passions. That again is evident when you hear him talk about runners like Matthew Elliott. His interview afterwards, it was less than one minute, but it was the most inspiring minute I've 
probably experienced in the world of track and field. This guy is in tears and just saying, you know, it was God's big hand just pushing me along that last 100 meters. So he had, he had experienced that moment and to be able to write an article about this guy and say how he affected so many people, including myself, was, was something special, man. Something I'll never forget. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely a highlight I can, I can give you. If you want to learn more about FlowTrack, you can check it out online at www.flowtrack.org. Fans in the stands at Rhodes Stadium get a great view of the game, but it takes a different perspective to see everything that happens on game day. Here are the sights and sounds of the game from up close and personal as the Elon Phoenix took on the Chattanooga Mocs. Come out and support the Phoenix at their next home game on November 9th as they host the Citadel for homecoming. And that brings us to today's trivia. Since being moved to Division I, what is the highest number of wins ever recorded by the Elon men's basketball team? The answer to that coming up later. We have to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we talk with one of the seniors from the men's basketball team about his past accomplishments and goals for the upcoming season. As we go to break, take a look at the week ahead in Elon Sports.
You're watching the Elon Phoenix Weekly on ESPN2. An Elon education is about preparing students for a life of global citizenship. Of course, this is a place where you're going to come and earn a degree, but it's also a place that's going to get you to think very deeply about how you're going to use that degree to make the world a better place. Through their daily pursuit of excellence, Elon student athletes have gained recognition for their achievements both on and off the field. Building a winning tradition takes hard work and dedication. Dedication to the maroon life. Where success is not only measured by just wins and trophies, <laughs> but also by the knowledge we gain. At Elon, we're more than just athletes. <laughs> We're student athletes. Providing support enables success. Help sustain the winning tradition of Elon Athletics while securing the future of our student athletes for years to come. What is living the maroon life? It's more than just the hustle and the sweat. It's more than just the pain and the frustration. It's more than just the triumph and the glory. The maroon life is you. Yes, you. You, the athlete striving to be at your best day in and day out. You, the alumni who have been in the stands supporting Elon for years. You, the fans who stream into games hours before kickoff. And you, the little ones who will be the next generation of Phoenix fans. You are what drives Elon Athletics and you are the reason we do what we do. There is so much history and tradition behind our maroon. Conference titles, all American, and national championships. But there is so much history and tradition yet to be made. So join us. Live the Maroon Life. Now back to the Elon Phoenix Weekly on ESPN2. Elon Phoenix Weekly is made possible by the students of the School of Communications in association with the dedicated coaches, athletes, and staff of Elon Athletics. Entering his fourth season on the men's basketball team, senior Lucas Troutman has become a cornerstone for the Phoenix. He has turned into a force down low and helped lead the team to their first SOCON North Division title since 2006. Let's take a look at his accomplishments and what he wants out of his final season. Being an All-American is one of the rarest achievements in collegiate sports. This year, Elon's own Lucas Troutman was named to the preseason All-American team, in addition to being named to the Lou Henson Award list, which is given to the top mid-major player in all of collegiate basketball. Well, it's an honor. I mean, it's anytime you can get an award like that or any kind of recognition like that, it's always an honor. And, you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of motivation to keep going through the year and uh, know that you've got a lot of things you have to live up to. The recognition is really neat for Lucas, but uh, I think Lucas would tell you it's great for our program and it's great for his classmates and his teammates. Uh, but it speaks not only to how hard he's worked, but uh, how, how the other guys have worked. And, uh, we have come a long way, and we've come a long way because our players have committed to improving on a daily basis. It's almost validating all the stuff that he's done and we've done as a team, and so we're all proud of him. And, uh, like you said, it's preseason stuff, but it's still, it matters, but now it's time to let that stuff go and it's time to play. See, everybody's just getting excited about the season. I mean, that's before every year. 
Uh, yeah, we are. We have everybody back this year, so you know it's a little more than usual. But you know, it's just something we're gonna have to attack, something we're gonna have to face. And you know, every day it's not about you know what we're predicted to do or what we should do. It's about what we need to do now and how we're gonna better ourselves. You know, for later on in the year. First of all, it's Lucas is putting the work. Uh, Lucas deserves the credit for you know putting in the hours. And, and and getting himself into this position. Um, it means a heck of a lot to the program in terms of um, you know, being able to take a guy who came in as a freshman and, and contributed, but he's continued to get better and adding things to his game every season he's been here. So um, for him to be recognized like that is a great honor for him. He committed this summer to spend the entire months of June, July, and most of all was here on campus. And as a result, uh, he's made great strides just in his physical development, gaining uh, 15, 20 pounds of muscle, and, and his conditioning. He is as ready for this season as he's been for any season since he's been here. Lucas has steadily improved each year, and thanks to the long hours he's put in during the off season, his teammates and the Elon coaching staff will reap the benefits. As a coaching staff, we're very committed to, to player development. And, and so we take a lot of pride in, in how far Lucas has come and, and how far he continues to go. And so our challenge for him is to, you know, hey, you're, you're at this level, let's continue to get better, let's continue to scrap and, and fight to get even better than you are now. Day in, day out, they're always working with me. Uh, anytime I need to get in the gym, anytime I want to get in the gym, you know, Tim Sweeney's there. He's always been kind of my coach, my personal coach. Uh, day or night, no matter what time, you know, he's there and wants to do something. I've had him several times ask me, you know, hey, you want to get a midnight workout in? Now, I think he's crazy for that, but you know, we have been able to get later in the gym and do stuff like that. You know, they've been a big key and a big part of you know how it turned out. He runs really well, and uh, not only is he 6'10 now, 230, but he's mobile. Um, so it's a north and south run that he does effectively offensively. Uh, he does it well defensively, um, but his mobility is even more valuable for us than North and South. He's very good at defending ball screens, which are absolutely vital in the college game. Uh, Lucas is great at, at hedging out, uh, doubling a ball screen, and equally uh, talented at recovering from whatever ball screen defense we're in. He's able to impact the game in a lot of different ways. A lot of people see his scoring. You know, he averaged nearly 15 points a game last year. He can certainly do that. Also along with that is he draws a lot of attention um, on the court. Uh, teams have to game plan for him, so he actually opens up a lot of the other players to, to be able to be effective. Well, he's become uh, a lot more consistent at making the 12, 13, 14, 15 foot jumper. And, and that's vital for a big guy. It's a shot that bigs get a lot uh, because their man is constantly helping on dribble penetration. So uh, our bigs, and Lucas specifically, will get that shot a lot. He's knocking that down consistently now. So that makes a difference not only for him, but for us. I think he's closing in on being Elon's career shot block leader. Um, you know, and he's very good on that end as well. So he's able to impact the game in, in multiple ways. I think you've seen him become a better foul shooter. Um, he, he, he knows he's going to be fouled and there's going to be attention on him. So he's really worked hard on that. And uh, it, it's nice to see him improve in that area. And I think you'll see that this season. Um, the other thing he needs to improve on is his ball handling and just kind of getting stronger and stronger again because of all the attention he's going to get. Despite receiving so much attention during the off season, Lucas is looking to improve on his game and being even better next season. How, do, how I shoot the ball, uh, ways I'm finishing, um, just different ways. I mean, that's for everybody. We, our weaknesses last year is things we need to work on this year. I mean, stuff with ball handling and turnovers and things like that is something we're all kind of focusing in on this year. Troutman and the rest of the team opened their season with an exhibition game against Lynchburg on November 4th. And that brings us to today's history. On this day in Elon Sports history, we take a look back into the early 1970s and the early years of Elon Volleyball. Under the direction of Naismith Hall of Fame inductee K. Yao, Volleyball Elon was an instant success. In their inaugural season, the 1972 Lady Christians compiled a record of 20-6 and, and placed third in the regional qualifying tournament. The next two seasons went just as well for Elon, as they posted records of 21-12 and 31-8 and and while advancing to the finals of Southern Regional. In 1975, the volleyball program would experience a change at the top. Barbara Yalbrow took over as head coach and kept the program rolling with a third place finish in the state and a berth to the NCAIAW tournament. 
After three solid years, Coach Yarbrough had high hopes for the fourth, but injuries to key players including Captain Caroline Smith left Elon with a squad of nine. The 1978 squad was still able to post a respectable record of 17 and 14. These early volleyball teams raised the bar for Elon Athletics and set a very high standard for volleyball at Elon. And that's today's look into Elon sports history. We have to take another break, but don't go anywhere, because when we return, we take a look at how Elon athletes spent a day giving back to their community. As we go to break, take a look at more upcoming Elon athletic events. And now back to the Elon Phoenix Weekly on ESPN2. Phoenix fans, be sure to live the maroon life and support Elon Athletics by ordering your football season tickets now. Log on to www.elonphoenix.com or call the ticket office at 336-278-6750 to reserve your seats now. There are currently over 350 Elon student athletes competing in 16 NCAA Division I sports. Scholarships enable us to succeed not only on the field, but also in the classroom. It helps us in achieving our commitment. To live the maroon life. Your gifts have the power to take Phoenix Athletics to even greater heights while giving student athletes an outstanding education. You're watching the Elon Phoenix Weekly on ESPN2. Welcome back to the Elon Phoenix Weekly on your ESPN2 local sports break. Earlier in the show, we asked... Since being moved to Division I, what is the highest number of wins ever recorded by the Elon men's basketball team? The answer, 21. During the 2012-2013 season, Coach Matt Matheny and the basketball team posted a record of 21 and 12. 21 wins are the most since the Phoenix had had since 1973-1974 season. During the last year's season, the team went on to win the Southern Conference North Division title for the first time since 2006. Now let's hear from Andrew Wilson, the sports editor of Elon's local newspaper, The Pendulum, about a family rich in tradition here in Elon Athletics. Sydney Branson, a goalkeeper on the Elon University women's soccer team, wears number 40 for good reason. Normally, goalkeepers stick with zero, double zero, or one. Branson wears 40 in honor of someone else, her grandfather. Jesse Branson's number 40 was one of the first numbers to hang from the rafters in Alumni Gym when it was retired in February of 2009. Since Jesse's playing days, the Branson family has seen two more athletes come through the Elon system, Sydney and her dad, former basketball player Brian Branson. Together, the long line of Bransons have stuck together in the area. Jesse resides in Burlington, and Brian, who is a member of Elon's Athletic Hall of Fame, lives in Raleigh. But each Elon women's soccer home game, the clan of Bransons usually find their way to Rudfield to watch the Phoenix. Sydney said, they're amazing. I feel so bad. Even if I'm not playing, they're there. If you want to read more of Andrew's stories or just more from the Pendulum as a whole, check out their content at elonpendulum.com. Elon athletes are used to having the spotlight on them. Crowds flock to games to support the Phoenix athletic teams throughout the year. But for one day, the athletes turn the spotlight to the youth of the area. A special week for students in the Burlington school systems as the Make a Difference Foundation partnered with Elon University Athletics. 
three different elementary schools welcomed a variety of Elon athletes covering every sport. The schools have hosted many different events in the past to generate funds for organizations, but in those events, the kids do not directly see the results. That's what makes the Make a Difference event so unique. This is kind of a different type of, uh, of arrangement because it is making a difference because of the direct contact in the classroom to support learning. I think the powerful part of this has been um, the, uh, the promoting and supporting of literacy. Elon athletes showed up in bunches to the schools impressing the elementary administrators. This gave the children opportunities to truly engage with the athletes. The actual, you know, one-on-one -on -one engagement of watching the athletes with the students. Um, it's not something that, I'll be honest, I really expected. I truly didn't expect it to be that special, even though this is what I'm doing, setting it up. But it, it truly was. And um, you actually saw, you know, people change and um, as far as their smiles on their face, not that they were unhappy to begin with, but you can tell when a good feeling comes over someone and that right there is what we were wanting to happen. In the time the athletes spent there, it was not just fun and games players took the opportunity to educate and inform the children about real world issues. And we basically uh, talked to them about having a positive attitude and how do you deal with bullies and how if you have negative things happening in, in your life, how do you handle those? And also since it's Red Ribbon Week, we talked to them about drugs and how they're bad for you. It was great giving back to the community because it was awesome to interact with kids and hear their opinion and insight on how they view things and how they handle certain situations. Elon athletes experience a lot of success in and out of the classroom and get well-deserved attention. But this week was not about the Phoenix, but rather the children. It's, it's inspirational for the kids to, for, on more than one level, not only to be a good reader, but they see that it's important to read, um, to go to college, uh, to be an athlete. You know, here at elementary school, they're not really thinking about long term, but as the athletes come over, they do make an impact. The elementary students listened intently and stared wide-eyed as the athletes read, played, and talked to them. But the kids weren't the only ones who were taken aback. I never really grew up with little kids, so I honestly didn't know little kids like looked up to college athletes as much. So it was great to know that what we do doesn't go unnoticed and that people really do appreciate what we do and our hard work and dedication does pay off. It's no secret that college students have a lot on their plates. Being a student athlete, well that just makes it even more challenging. For the Elon athletes to volunteer their time so generously all week was truly special. It seemed unbelievable that they would come in and take their time to do such a, a kind act. Um, we view them as role models, almost as celebrities as we do athletes, and we watch them play games. I can't tell you the impact it had on me personally. To only ask, and it happened, it happened in such a large way, it speaks volumes of the university the character of the athletes and the programs that are going on, um, it's, it's amazing. Well, that's our show for today. If you missed anything or want to watch it again, be sure to check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash Elon Phoenix Weekly. You can also catch us on Time Warner Cable, channel 1083, to watch us on demand. Also, be sure to visit elonphoenix.com, your number one source for all the maroon and gold buzz. On behalf of our producers and crew here at the show, we hope you continue to have a spectacular weekend. For the Elon Phoenix Weekly, I'm Kimberly Wisniewski. And I'm Joe Durianta. We'll see you next week.